Alright, welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Raihan, I'm a third year medical student and um, today's video is something a little bit different. So recently someone messaged me asking if I could uh, make a little video about um, fasting and studying um, because they've got exams coming up and as you might be aware, Ramadan is also approaching. It's around 15 days from when I'm making this video. So Ramadan is approximately 15 days away and people have got their exams coming up in about a month's time. So this is going to be split into two videos. The first video I'm going to talk about the science behind fasting and its effect on your brain function and your cognitive uh, function. The second video will be a study technique and my study timetable during um, Ramadan or during the time that I fast. So the reason I'm making the first part is because to motivate myself, I wanted to look into the effects of fasting on my brain function. Um, I'm going to be fasting anyways, but but it's interesting to know what effects that this will have on my brain function and and whether or not it will improve or or worsen my memory ultimately. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see the second part of the video, and I'm going to jump in to the first part of this video. I had a look into this right. Um, I spent about a week or two researching the effects and reading articles on the effects of fasting on general health and then the effects of fasting on cognitive function and brain function. So there were quite a few articles which I came across but one thing stood up to me quite a bit. Now there was this protein which was constantly mentioned in most of the articles which I came across which had anything to do with brain function and, and um, fasting and that was BDNF. Now BDNF is brain derived neurotropic factor and what I found out was that brain derived neurotropic factor it is a protein which is responsible for the creation of new neurons now this is a good thing neurogenesis which is the formation of new neurons is what helps with our memory and our cognitive function it the BDNF allows for the formation of new neurons um, which ultimately improve our memory in the long run Another article had stated that BDNF is associated with, with increased intelligence, with increased mood, with increased productivity and with increased long term memory. Which is a good thing, um, you know, this was the first article that I came across and it was telling me that by fasting I increase my BDNF and by increasing my BDNF I, I increase my memory, my productivity, my mood, all of this. So then I was like, okay, let me look into it a bit further and see where do they come to this conclusion from? So then I came across this uh, particular study which was titled The Effect of Fasting in Ramadan on the Concentration of Serotonin, Dopamine, BDNF and NGF. NGF is Nerve Growth Factor um, but I'm not going to be talking much about that. Now in this study I'm going to be talking mainly about the um, BDNF. There were changes that they noticed in the serotonin, the dopamine and the NGF but mainly BDNF is the my main focus uh, of, of, of this study. There were, in this study there were 29 participants, 22 of them were female and 7 of them were male. Blood samples were taken 2 days before they started fasting. Then they took blood samples halfway through Ramadan which was after 14 days of fasting and then after 29 days of fasting. So then I looked into the results that they'd found and the results were quite significant. So they analyzed the blood samples using the ELISA method and they found that the BDNF after 14 days of fasting increased by 25%. A 25% increase in your BDNF after 14 days of fasting. And then what they found was after 29 days of fasting, your BDNF increased by 47%. A 47% increase in your BDNF, which was honestly to me like that was a big thing because for me, right, I was expecting, so I was expecting along the something along the lines like, you know, 5% increase in BDNF, which was a good thing. I mean, 
any increase is a good increase so then I decided to look into it this a bit more now um, then I came across a professor of neuroscience at John Hopkins University and his name was Mark Matson. now Mark Matson is quite popular or quite prominent in this field of fasting and the effects of fasting on the human health and the human and the human brain function I remember Mark Matson because he was also he featured on a documentary a few years ago um, on BBC which talked about the effects of fasting on the human body um, with Michael Mosley and it was quite an eye-opening documentary for me so I remembered him from there but then I looked into him even more and he has TED talks which have been viewed millions of times and he's wrote many articles and and he's you know he's given talks all around the world about this topic now I'll quickly play you a little a short clip of what he has to say about fasting on the on um, on brain function because it's quite a long clip but I'll shorten it down to the main points which I thought were quite important okay why does fasting bolster brain power during development of your brain but also in your adult in the adult neurons are generated from stem cells they grow out their axons and dendrites they form connections with each other synapses and communicate with it, with each other we think the reason the main take-home message of this talk is that fasting is a challenge to your brain and your brain responds to that challenge of not having food by activating adaptive stress response pathways that help your brain cope with stress and res resist disease so when anything we talk about in biology we have to always ask the question why is it that way well if you're hungry and haven't found food you better figure out how to find food you don't want your brain to shut down if you're hungry and in fact that's what we find in the animals nerve cell circuits are more active okay so here's the idea challenges to your brain whether it's intermittent fasting vigorous exercise or what we're doing now hopefully if you haven't fallen asleep is cognitive challenges when this happens neural circuits are activated levels of neurotrophic factors such as BDNF increase that promotes the growth of the neurons the formation and strengthening of synapses also shown in the lower left it turns out both exercise intermittent fasting and using your neurons uh, using your brain can increase the production of new nerve cells from stem cells at least in one region of your brain called the hippocampus which is shown here why why is it that the normal diet is three meals a day plus snacks it isn't that it's the healthiest way eating pattern and that's my opinion but I think there's a lot of evidence to support that there are a lot of pressures uh, to have that eating pattern there's a lot of money involved the food industry are they gonna make money from skipping breakfast like I did today no they're gonna lose money if people eat fast the food industry lose money what about the pharmaceutical industry what if people you know do some intermittent fasting and exercise periodically and are very healthy is the pharmaceutical industry gonna make any money on healthy people so one challenge for society and, and this is one of the purposes of these TED talks hopefully is that uh, communication is the way to improve health now <clears throat> after I uh, had a look at these articles then I came across another article now this article is different because this was actually performed on mice instead of humans which I guess might not be as reliable and, and when I put it up on my snapchat people were saying oh you know um, it's a good article but they did it on mice therefore you know you can't apply that data to humans so this study was um, chronic intermittent fasting improves cognitive function and brain structures in mice to basically give you an idea of what they did in this study so there were 15 control mice now these 15 mice were given a normal diet normal food um, and fed as they would be usually there were 19 mice on the intermittent fasting diet um, and there were 15 mice which were on the high fat diet this was an 11 month study which is quite a long period of time so what did they find well number one 
they found that better learning and memory um, was observed uh, using the Barnes maze and fear conditioning. Um, and I'll put a picture of the Barnes maze up so you can see what I mean by that. Number two, what they found was they found thicker CA1 pyramidal cell layer. They also found higher expression of drebrin, which is a protein in the cerebral cortex and hippocampus, which I will talk about later on. And number four, they found lower levels of oxidative stress. Now, oxidative stress, um, again, I'll talk about a bit later on. So, to go back, Number one, better learning and memories. The mice that were put on the intermittent fasting diet were able to remember um, where the hole was in the um, in the Barnes maze test and uh, had better memory in that sense. So that's number one. For us, for me, I guess that's not as important because uh, my exams don't involve me being put in a in a big circle with holes and having to find these holes. Unfortunately, my exams are a bit more complicated and, and involve me having to examine real patients with uh, COPD and heart failure and other life-threatening conditions. So that for me wasn't as relevant, but there is one thing that I could draw from this and that's that, and that is that the chronic intermittent fasting improved their learning and their memory which is something that I can benefit from. Number two, the thicker CA1 pyramidal cell layer. Now this kind of went in one ear and came out the other ear for me because I was like what is CA1 and what on earth is a pyramidal cell? So I decided to look into this a, a little bit more. Now what I found was that CA1 is critical for autobiographical memory. Now, this is information about yourself and um, and it improves your memory um, in relation to information about yourself, which was quite complex and quite difficult for me to get my head, head around because uh, I was like, so what does that mean? Is that, you know, my date of birth? Anyways, I looked into this this a little bit more and I also found that this was responsible for spatial memory, mental time travel and these are things which aren't as important to me. So you know spatial memory is not really that important to me to help pass my exams. The third thing that they found was that there was a higher expression of Drebrin. I hope I'm saying this right because it's spelled D-R-E-B-R-I-N Drebrin which sounds a bit funny but now when I looked into Drebrin, because I've never heard of Drebrin in my three years of medical school, so I had to have a look into this, find out what it was, and I figured out that Drebrin is a protein which is responsible for neuronal growth, so the growth of neurons again. So like BDNF, BDNF aids in the uh, creation of new neurons for learning and for memory. Drebrin is another protein which is helpful in neuronal growth, so creating new neurons. Now, this is a protein found in the cerebral cortex and the hippocampus. And what they found was that a decrease in Drebrin was linked to an increase in memory problems, which was, I guess, it doesn't mean to say that an increase in Drebrin increases your memory, but what they did find was that a decrease in Drebrin also gave you memory problems so you know you can't draw a conclusion from this and it does require further research um, but for me for my sake I'm gonna to, to make myself feel better to to help me sleep at night I'm gonna take what I'm gonna take away from this is that an increase in Drebrin also increases my memory now, number four, lower oxidative stress. So by lower levels of oxidative stress, what they mean is that they found a reduced levels of something called HNE. Now HNE, if you want the long name for this, is 4-hydroxy-2-nonenal. Um, hopefully I can fit that name onto the screen, um, but that was the name of HNE. So I'm gonna stick to HNE. For me, again, HNE, something that I've never heard of, and, and nitrotyrosine, something that I've not really heard of. So I had to look into this again. And I, what I found was that lower levels of these compounds is good for our brain. The reason behind it is that 
HNE and nitrotyrosine containing proteins, they inhibit or they stop your CNS mitochondria from respiring. So the mitochondria in your central nervous system, for example, your brain and your spine, it stops it from producing energy or producing ATP, which is a universal energy currency in our body. Um, so basically we want to produce as little of well from this study in relation to our memory we want to produce as little of HNE and as little of nitrotyrosine containing proteins as we can if we want to um, basically help with our learning so the aim of this video hopefully is giving you an idea of um, how fasting can also improve and, and, and help with your brain function um, and can boost your brain power ultimately so, if this video is helpful, make sure you share it with your friends who might not consider fasting or who, who you think might benefit from fasting and, and improving their brain power without sounding too insulting. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe as usual. And bye for now.